Colette does not look very excited for this because it has congealed cow blood and so she's a little turned off. A little hesitant to dig in, but when in soul. Made it to Seoul. We're both so excited to be here. I don't know why, but this is a location that we are just super pumped to go explore, basically to eat and drink the next three or four days. Whoop, whoop. Who wouldn't be excited then? All right, our first spot was actually recommended by the hotel, and that is the cuisine of Korean fried chicken. Wait, is that a thing? <laughs> that's, Apparently it that's, is. That's a thing, yeah. So, Korean fried chicken. We're going to Kanbu. Kanbu? The Four Seasons concierge said, make sure to get a beer with your fried chicken. It's the only way to eat it. And I was yeah. like, yeah, obviously. Let's go check it out. This place reminds me of like, Stay by the Bell had a fried chicken place. It's like Max's, but like modern and in Seoul. I mean, I'd love to be partners with both of you. Why don't you just go with the best dancer? I love the efficiency here because there's a little bell at the table, a little button that you push when you want service and they come right away. That's all anyone ever wants in life. Just, just a little, bing, bing. I'll take I your order something. please. Beer piece. Well, this fried chicken is really, really good. It's delicious. It's like fr fresh made. I mean, this is true KFC, your <laughs> Korean fried chicken. Woohoo! Great success. So, for all of that, we had fried chicken, three beers. It was about 35 US dollars, 37,000 won, I think. Now that we are stuffed with some fried chicken, we're going to one of the best bars in the world. It's actually at the Four Seasons. It's a speakeasy. Top 60 bars in the world. Charles H. Speakeasy at the Four Seasons. Let's go drink some more. <laughs> Where is it? Where's... It looks like a utility door. But I think it's right there. Follow me. So it's a coconut aged old fashion. Beautiful, you're an artist. We just got, and I got probably the most amazing old fashioned I've ever had in my life. Ooh, and I got it. She got really a really delicious martini. Dip martini, but the service here is spectacular. A little accoutrement, some olives, chips, crudite, and the bartender is oh so amazing. Just call me Stoller. Colette Stoller. <laughs> Whoa! Oh the globe and the writing, oh my god. Charles H. is like my soul spirit animal. <laughs> I want to be him when I grow up. Okay, for our next dining experience, we're going to get hangover soup. It's really what it's called because here in Seoul, everyone likes to enjoy themselves and indulge A little in too lots much of drinking. Soju. <laughs> so the first thing about this is it's not the easiest to find because the signs are not in English. So basically the way we found it was looking at the photos on Google Maps and then matching the storefront to the one to match the photo. So we finally found it after a short detour, and now we're here. So we are at Changjinok, which is known for its hangover soup. I think we're gonna feel better. It's gonna be like hangover soup for the soul in Seoul. All right, so first things first, when you get in here, they don't really speak English, and the menu has a little bit of English on it, but basically on the front page, it just says hangover stew. So that's what we got. and. The only reason why we know what's in it is because there's an article from CNN.com that's raving about this restaurant that talks about the stew. So it's got, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you what's in it. It's got that in there, that in there, that in there, and probably some of that. We are the only gringos here. <laughs> so you know it's gonna be good. Oh, I'm uh, excited and nervous. I've never had congealed cow blood before. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> Colette does not look very excited for this. She's a little turned off. A little hesitant to dig in, but when in Seoul. Okay, so we are in the middle of the meal and it's different. It's not really what we expected. We expected more like, I think ramen, but uh, it's got congealed blood. That's a big thumbs up, I love that. <laughs> But it's an experience. I mean, you come here, you've got your rice, you've got onions, you've got some pickled, we think it's jicama. And it may not be our favorite meal, but we, try. we are trying it. I'm a little disturbed right now because I've been eating these things that I thought were mushrooms, but it's really stomach lining. <laughs> I just found out. 
It's okay. You're supposed to try new things, right? Try new foods. I'm glad I had it. I'm not going to have another bite, though, because <laughs> I'm a little freaked out. <laughs> what a wuss, huh? We are headed to Gyeongbokgung Palace, which was built in the 1300s originally. Isn't that crazy? So, before we fill our stomachs, we want to get a dose of culture. Let's take you into the palace. So we're entering the palace and they have all the guards outside dressed in their historic garb and outfits. And it's kind of like Buckingham Palace. You can take changing pictures. Changing of the guards. <laughs> yeah, the change of the guards. Yeah. You can stand next to them, take pictures, which we saw tons of people doing. And there are a lot of people dressed up, which we don't exactly know why, but a lot of people are dressed up in the historic outfits as well. I'm not sure if this is just for photo opportunities or if it's like a, a tradition. We'll have to look that one up. So the architecture here is quite diverse. You have ancient architecture here, then you have very modern architecture here, and then you have older government buildings over yonder. Okay, so we have just kind of gotten to the end, I think, or the main part of the tour. And my first impression was, I thought this was going to be pretty boring because from the outside it just looks like the same building over and over again but when you get in here you realize that there's a lot of ornate detail oh yeah especially in the ceilings if you go to the end and the main building you can take a peek inside now you can't go inside but make sure to look in and look up yeah so this was a i mean for three dollars this is a really good deal <laughs> very touristy as you can see there's yes. tons of people all around this and we still haven't figured out why everyone's dressing up in the historic garments, but we're going to find out. Yeah. You see there's one right behind us in that dress. So they're beautiful. They are beautiful. Oh, okay. And so cheap. Okay. <laughs> it's very beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> well, you heard it there, if you did. So. Okay, so we just found out that they get in free if they wear the garbs. That was the first information we got. So, so next time, wear your traditional Korean dress. Unfortunately, a Patagucci jacket doesn't get you in free. You have to pay to get in. Three dollars. What's up guys? We made it to Gangnam. That is just like the song, Gangnam Style, which means south of the river in Seoul. And we are about to go indulge in some Korean barbecue with some family friends who recommended this amazing place called Wobol. So all of that ox blood that we had for lunch <laughs> has digested and now we are ready to have some of the best food in Korea. That is Korean barbecue. So this is a very classy Korean barbecue restaurant and we can't wait to show you inside. In Korea, a lot of the butchers actually name the, uh, the cuts themselves. So you're going to cut all these as we go along? Yeah. Okay. All right, so first impressions as we've walked into Uwol. All right, so we already made one mistake. It's <laughs> Uwol, that's how you pronounce it. But first impressions we walk in, the seating, the ambiance, it just seems to be first class. And right here, this is an omakase serving, and so this chef has just showed us all the beefs that we're going to be serving, and he is cooking them for us to the optimum level. That's and right. the one thing we learned is that the beef in Korea is more about the texture as compared to the States, it's more about the flavor. Well said. <laughs> bon appetit. Cheers, cheers. The soju has started, so I apologize for anything that happens after this. All right, so that wraps up probably, well, I mean, actually it's the best Korean barbecue we've ever had in our lives. I thought the food here was just cooked to perfection. This was fantastic. This was superb. This was five star all across the board. Totally worth the trip to Korea. All right, so this is definitely a first. We are in our Uber and look who's riding with us, birds. Yeah, so I think instead of just normal Uber, this must be an Uber pool. Yeko. Yippee. Yeko. 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 Hi. What's up, guys? This is a first, for sure. Oh. Okay. And you say stop. Stop. This is your car. Okay. 
fridge remember? Yep. Okay. Oh, like this? Yeah. Thumbs up. Cheese. Cheese. Well, that was <laughs> something I was never <laughs> expected. That was one of the coolest Uber rides I've ever had. I thought we were just getting in a taxi. But there uh, were birds, lights. There was magic. Magic shows. <laughs> and then we took a picture afterwards. So it was a full experience. Wow, that was very, very exciting. I think we can call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, so you'll have to forgive us because when we were at Gwyn Jane Market, we thought we recorded an intro, and it turns out we didn't hit the record button. So the cool thing about this market is it's one of the oldest and largest in all of Seoul. It has somewhere around 5,000 shops and something around 65,000 people visit there every single day. So we thought, this place is that cool. We have to go check it out. Okay, one thing to note is that the street hawkers here do not take credit cards, so bring some cash. It's probably one of the only places in Seoul that doesn't take a credit card. But there's plenty of places in the center of the market where you can just sit down and they make food fresh right there for you. You can have seafood, you can have dumplings, you can have noodles. We're about to have some spicy noodles and dumplings and I'm so excited once we get that money, honey. Okay, we just sat down at our first booth. It's for booth three at the market, and we are ordering some dumplings. All right, so we got the dumplings here and here. You can see these delicious. This is the pork, That's I think, the pork, pork and sausage, and we got the kimchi right there. Mm. Too hot? Good. Oh, it's really good. All right. You might be intimidated when you come here because things look a little different, but. Ooh, that's spicy. But mm. sit down, try. So far, super good. The two orders of dumplings plus a beer, and you get kimchi and soup. It was 15,000 won, which is a little less than 15 US dollars. Yeah, it's like 14. Nice. On to the next thing. Yeah, the spicy noodles and the bibimbap. I got the bibimbap, which is a mixture of fermented vegetables and rice and sprouts and then you got and then I got the spicy noodles which even though I love spicy food I'm a little worried because if they say it's spicy then it's gonna be really spicy it's a good dish mm -hmm. not as good as the well, the dumplings but the dumplings were so good I think kimchi. our favorite thing that we had besides all the kimchi was the first stop those kimchi dumplings they were amazing but overall, our visit to the market was incredible. I mean, I could have spent all day here and we spent about two and a half hours. Bye. Bye-bye. Come some Mira. Come some Mira. <laughs> oh yeah. Wait, we should get a photo with her. I'm sitting here wondering. Now we're in the Myeongdong area and we saw a sign for a cat cafe. <laughs> so we figured we should go right now. So we have made it to this cat cafe and uh, <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious. There's probably 40 some cats all around here, but they do have rules because one, stay away from the blue collars because they will bite. The yellow ones are on a diet and we found this behemoth of a cat. I mean, this guy, this guy's been eating for two for probably the past 10 years. Look at this guy. This, found a chunky monkey. This guy's got a yellow collar, so you can't feed him, but look at him, he's a tank. My next life, I'm gonna be this guy. 